notable hiring announced yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, curious what your connection to Sean Snyder is. How how far um, you guys go back, and how did that all come about? Really, as far as we go back, is probably three weeks that we had any personal connection and, and interaction. Um, but I know kind of where you're going. Um, the I guess the topic of, of Coach Snyder joining us in some capacity was uh, we kind of floated around a little bit last year. Um, and, um, you know, as, as things were, um, you know, just in its infancy and, and some conversations, um, and I, it didn't even get where I was really involved then. He had the opportunity to go to Illinois for the season. And, uh, you know, and uh, his relationship and, and past relationship with Brett Bielema and all that kind of, kind of you know, it was an opportunity for him. And uh, when we had a chance now to, to revisit and, and look at some situations, uh, uh, he came down a couple times, had some talks, and uh, we were able to, to you know, um, Bring him on board here yesterday. Well, I think there'll be a lot of things he's going to help us with. Obviously, his uh, uh, experience with special teams will be first and foremost, and uh, um, with specialists. And you know, we you know Ty Woe's still coordinating it. And the guys are involved there. Aaron Miller, Zach Barton are um, you know our analysts there. He kind of be in, in an analyst type role with them. He's going to be doing some. Um, analyst type things with our defense as well as some things that we had we had talked about, um, and then uh, of course uh, I think he'll have, he'll be with kind of Rob Ionello and Michael Painter in some areas. You know, uh, Rob and our recruiting, um, obviously, and some things in the state of Kansas that uh, we want to continue to work to get better at. Um, you know. Uh, Coach Schneider was a, uh, was a, was in operations for a while, so I'm sure there's things there that we can use his resources. He's been involved in um, renovation and facility improvements, so I want, I, you know, that was one in our second conversation that I, I said, you know, uh, I'm sure you've gone through some things that that can be beneficial um, in, in that. So all those things holistically, um, our Kansas relations and things like that as a whole. Um, you know, I, I just think it was too good of opportunity not to uh, ex- explore this and uh, a chance for, for us as a program to get better and um, knowing myself that there's things that I have to continue to work on to be a better head coach and, and to take some of these uh, experiences uh, of, of w- what he has been a part of, his time at USC. There's a lot of things that obviously we play Illinois uh, the next two seasons, so – um, way too many, many positives. Not, not to, not to explore this. Have you had any past connections or, or dealings with with his father, Bill? Uh, no, you know, a little. Not, not. You know, I received a really nice note from him, I, as he's probably well known for his, you know, a handwritten note. But uh, um, short upon the arrival in, in the summer of the first year, I received a note. Um, but very, you know, I've met him, but that that's really about it. Um, but I'd go back, way back to my times as a graduate assistant at Wisconsin, about the same time that, uh, you know, uh, Coach Alvarez was was putting that program together. He, he, many times, if it wasn't Lou Holtz or Hayden Fry, there was a Coach Bill Schneider reference a lot of times about different things. So. You know the the name and 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 what he did to build that program. Um, obviously, you know my time in Omaha and Lincoln. Um, there's 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 things that kind of connect that way too. That kind of been there. So um, I have great respect for what's been done there. You mentioned that high school relations part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's still to be determined. I, I think it's probably more philosophical right now in some things. Uh, we'll see. Um, you know, there only our 10 assistants and myself can go on the road. So, I mean, there's um, there's rules and restrictions on some things. But there are things that our guys who are in these other roles can be a part of. Um, but, uh, I, you know, he's been in this state a long time and knows a lot of people. And... Uh, 
and also sat in a lot of recruiting meetings and things like that, and even the other places. Um, you know, uh, I've said before, Brett Bielema was, and I'll say it again this fall, was, it, you know, really reached out to me and, and helped me when I first got the Buffalo job, knew him when I was in Wisconsin at Whitewater, and he was with, you know, running the Badger program. And, and there's things there that I, I think are probably also going to be things that, that kind of tap into. I always say that some of our newer guys, have, when they join us, I, I, I like to learn and, and hear how other things are done. So. No, um, suggest as a, to, of him, I, I guess, in what way I get. Well, you know, I, I don't know about being part of it, but I, roundabout ways, I guess there are people that, um, I think a year ago, Rob Ionella was the one that had mentioned it first to me in some capacity, um, you know, uh, you know, there was there. I don't remember exactly how it came the second time, but Colin Sexton, who who played for you know played a lot of special teams for Coach Snyder, was one that uh, you know as as conversation started going. Um, yeah, there was there was kind of multiple people there that that kind of was where he was. I wasn't sure about because he was kind of filling in for a coach at Illinois that that was on leave. So it was a, a kind of a, a limited appointment and where that was going. I just wasn't sure what was next for him and as we were kind of working through things. So kind of went that way. And then you guys have kind of gone after like Coach Pete Carter in terms of like the top line for you. Um, Sean obviously has a very impressive resume as a Yeah, well, you're restricted in that role, what you can do on the field, but it's input schematics. And like I said, we've, you know, Aaron Miller came to us a year ago from Rutgers and and he's been a great addition. Zach Barton um, was at Kent State and, you know, probably through special teams uh, completely flipped the game against us that we played against them. And it's probably, unfortunately, one of the tougher games I've ever probably had as a head coach. And big part of, you know, some philosophical things there, Taiwo. So, you know, the, the biggest thing is we're, we're, we're heading down, uh, you know, in the changes we've made already. Um, we want to make sure that we supplement that without, you know, you know, changing 180 in, in a philosophical approach. That said, um, his time, his experience, his reputation, um, he's going to have, uh, I, I think, valuable input. And, and that's one thing I think with the names I just said, what we do, how we do it. Um, you've heard me talk about alignment and uh, and things that's going to be important. I think we have a, a great staff of guys with uh, um, controlled egos that un that understand that it's for the betterment of the program. And I think when I talk to all those three names, I said, you know, and I, I approach that this could be a possibility. And they said, why wouldn't we? And that really says a lot about them. I think it's going to help us uh, kind of, you know, we can, you know, it's, it's more manpower a little bit too. You got a chance to, 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 to put it out there a little bit. So I, I know he'll make, con you know, contributions and, uh, you know, we'll continue. To, but here we are, what, 12 in, and he's joining us now. So, you know, to make a bit of changes with six days left to spring is, is you know, a little, little tough to do. Coach, where's the competition at place kicking? Charlie's the guy a lot of us knew from Blue Valley mm -hmm. last, last year, and he seems to be one of the guys kind of in the mix. How do you look at your group? And, and yeah, I'm very, very pleased where we're at with that right now. Today was pretty challenging with the wind and, and things like that. Uh, you know, Owen, Owen Piper Curtis is a guy who continues to kind of because he's a he's the biggest, strongest of the bunch. Um, but uh, Seth has done a nice job, very consistent, and so has Charlie. It, it, it's really close. It's going to be a good battle in camp. Tabor Allen's still there, but um, he, you know he's he's you know I like when he focuses on kickoffs, but then it gets into uh, you know how many do you travel with on the road. So we've got to make sure that everything is as well as the the kickoff game is, is there's competition. Uh, Jacob Brachilla is, is in re is is rehabbing right now after surgery and hasn't part hasn't and won't partake in anything this spring. But the four there is 
it's charted every day. It's looked at, and uh, I, I like where we're trending. Had no definitive answers right now, but as you said about Charlie, he's been very consistent. Really like what he brings us. Um, Bill Bush, who was special teams coordinator at Nebraska last year, when when Charlie went in the portal, you know, he reached out. And, you know, we you know we thought Charlie maybe had you know we'd have a chance to get him back this way. Um, but uh, really thought that he had a, if if Bill would have stayed on staff that he had a future there he thought in his mind so and he hasn't disappointed us in that area at all. Casey maybe the most fun guy to watch at practice. He's had starring moments <laughs> mm -hmm. the last couple of years, but he still approaches every moment in practice like a walk on. He's the way he gets after it. I mean, yeah. He's constantly getting looks. What's the benefit? Team wide, when you see a guy that has a resume now, but he looks like he's still the hungriest guy. Yeah, it it it, it kind of goes back to the foundational, uh, uh, you know, makeup of a young man and, and how he goes about it. I think uh, it says a lot about that he is not resting on any laurels, um, you know, especially how we use him. But yet, you know, we don't, you know, he's probably still the old old throwback fullback type of guy, but. In, in our system, he's more of a tight end, so he's kind of always having to prove himself. I think, uh, you know, having Andy Kolnicki as his um, position coach really helps because, you know, obviously Andy's been able to vary our personnel group. He's how we use guys, but I think Andy does a good job as anybody to make sure that guys are squared away, focused and humble as they go about it with that and always working on something. But, uh, yeah, I think the thing about – you know, Jared, when when you, if you ask the players on this team, um, he's a lot more than making one catch in his career. And uh, you know, he's a he's a uh, he may not always look the part for certain things, but he's a really good athlete, and he makes a lot of plays. And uh, he'll be a key part of the offense for sure. Um. You know, again, I, I think as we're our defense is, is mixing some personnel and packages together, you're starting to see a few things come together. Um, you know, uh, again, we're, we're thin at defensive end right now. We're thin at running back, um, you know, which really kind of puts some different things in perspective. I, I, I like where we'll – I know I'll, I, I know we're going to be deeper than we were a year ago in the offensive line. The thing I like the most that that Scott and Scott and Andy and I took you know spent about an hour yesterday talking about mixing and matching some of these guys and now starting to play some other spots. So talking to guys a little bit more about okay, here's your primary spot, but here's your uh, you know this is this is your cross training spot. What do I mean by that? Okay, if Bryce Cable is going to play right right tackle left tackle may be a secondary spot okay you know uh michael ford's going to probably play all three spots interior wise amar j's probably going to play the two guard spots kobe baines may just play on the right side he may be a right guard and a right tackle okay logan brown might play both tackle spots okay and and Pooney might uh you know dominic might play on the left side, left guard, left tackle. Okay, so we're going to start working that. Um, Spencer Lovell's really starting to, to find, I think, his comfort in our offense, and he continues to work hard and showing that he can help us. So as we're looking at all these spots, what that does is it, when when we have anybody out for any reason, like Bryce Cable, who's been out the last couple of days, is we can still have a chance to put what would be our five best linemen on the field. And that's always been a priority for, for us. Um, I talk with Scott about it a lot in every August of who, are, where, where's our mixing and matching that sometimes if you rated your offensive linemen one through 10, and if one of the guys get hurt, I don't know if, if it's right now the guy who's maybe in the 10th spot needs to be the guy that's really playing in the sixth spot. So we got to be able to to do that. Our guys know that, and uh, they embrace that part of competition. So I, I think that's one that, that we've seen. Being outside in the conditions, I thought, was has been good. Probably something I, I need to challenge our team more about. I thought we handled that well. thought our receivers made a few plays today in that. LJ made a few nice plays. Um, 
you know, so uh, that's probably in a quick snapshot without watching it. Coach, could I ask another sort of quick snapshot question? Um, we heard a lot about how uh, having a month of practice and then a bowl game would help building, you know, sort of the tier system or progression where one team builds on the Are you seeing some of the results from that this spring in terms of the overall De- Definitely. Definitely. I, I think, again, it starts for me with retention. Okay. You, uh, you know, I watch from the time we break a huddle offensively, you know, how many times there's that little pause. I'm, you know, right or left. Where am I going? A lot more second nature of, of where we're at, the expectations of where we're going in practice, how it works, what we're doing, small things of the, you know, from the fundamentals of are we, are we thudding up and wrapping up? Are we tagging off? All those things are making it. But I've seen guys like Jalen Dye, we've talked about is some of the backup safeties, uh, um, you know, guys that might have been banged up uh, at certain points of the season continue to get better. I, you know, I'm trying to give you guys some different names. I look at Tommy Dunn and DJ Withers at defensive tackle um, and the confidence and, and progression that they continue to make. Cornell Wheeler's a linebacker. I think that's really had a nice spring. And uh, probably the last, since break, I think he started to catch my eye a little bit more. And I, I just think – they have a tendency to do that based off of those practices because there's just a little bit more confidence off the comfort of knowing what you're doing. And, uh, you know, now we've got to be able to take that and probably talk more next week with you all about it is, you know, taking that, putting it back into the weight room to gain more strength and speed confidence while we be at the same time, um, you know, taking what we've learned and get ready to put it on the field again in August. And, and if I could ask you one more snapshot of that question. Um, you mentioned Coach Snyder's uh, experience with facility development. Is in the big picture, are you liking what you're seeing and hearing in terms of the uh, progress of the assistant plan? Yes, I, I, I have some more meetings coming up, I think, as we you know leave spring here that I think they, they want me to be part of. Um, been very pleased and uh, appreciative of, you know, the, the you know, because some of this, uh, as we know, in all everything in today's, you know, uh, materials, timeline, work, the whole thing, um, the, we're moving quick uh, on 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 some of the renovation part of it, and then the what what becomes actually new is even more exciting. Um, I've. I feel very comfortable with what I've been able to give input on, which, which I appreciate from my superiors. And um, all those things are going to make it better. But, yeah, it's, it, it should be exciting. Not sure how soon some of this is going to fully be shared, but the little bit that they do share with me, I, I can tell you I think we'll all like it. Yeah, you know, we – you know, there was a part of the spring we were limiting the beginning um, for various reasons. Um, partially was the injury, but just watching. But again, there's some times where he's starting to, to make some throws now. Again, the total comfort level of what we're doing offensively is what you see. And, and I'm seeing him sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, he's making, making uh, probably. Uh, I don't want to say riskier throws, but he's more confident of putting the ball in places where maybe when guys are covered that he's either going to drop it in or put it on a back show. You can see the next step as he kind of continues to go here. And I think, to, you know, again, through summer development and everything, it's going to be, again, exciting to, to see number six. You know, watching him gain confidence in the system and in himself. I think there's part of that that I think the game's starting to slow down for him. Um, and that's exciting because he's, I think he's really talented. Um, when you look at, you know, just he's got good size, his thickness, speed, all of that. And, and you know, part of it was knowing what he's doing and then doing it confidently. And it's, it's kind of neat to see. I think him and guys like Romello and Jeremy, I am, again, I'll miss a few, but OJ, 
when you watch guys kind of, you know, because when we jumped into this thing in May of that year, you don't know. You don't sometimes, and and it's a mistake of mine probably is. You, for, you know, sometimes you think they've all been here the same amount of time when you walk in. You, you don't know the, you know, this guy's been here so many months and this guy's been here so many years. Well, and then you kind of watch, but then you start seeing them just grow and mature as young men, grow and mature physically in the weight room, and then grow and mature on the football field. And I think you're seeing some of these guys do that. And uh, it's really neat because they grow so much as, as as a man that from confidence it could be academic confidence it could be just personal physical development confidence that gets them out there and all that i think taiwan fits that for us yeah in the last 20 years probably fullback tight end not emphasized as much and, and yet that's a big part of the offense is the, the tight end is the slash put in the slot fullback mm -hmm. And their productive positions on offense for you. Why are those spots that are still important in being able to, to make the, the offense so diverse and difficult to defend? Well, I think you've, you you kind of hit it there at the end. Is is difficult to defend is when you can use motion and shift and, and create you know some other stresses through through those two things through splits um, alignment issues, but. It really goes in, you know, it, it's hand in hand for us. And this is where I think Andy and the offensive coaches do a great job is the compliments off everything and, and to try to try to, you know, use these things to our advantage. Um, I also think it's, a you know, in, whether it be this part of the country, but we always felt that wherever we've been, you can find a, a, a productive you know, football player that kind of fits our, not just our style, but who we are and things that want to work at it. And we, you know, you mentioned, uh, um, you know, Jared, I think, you know, Mason Fairchild fits that. I think Trevor Cardell does some really good things in using those guys and you can find ways to be productive, but they also have to embrace the part they're going to allow us to help run the football. And that's going to still be where it starts and then play action and other things start to, 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 come about off of that and that's why sometimes even you know we're not always going to run by people but we're going to have people open and and that's where those guys are so important in being disciplined and fundamental in what we do so it makes everything kind of you know tie in together